Right, what we have here is the uh, GPD XD. It's a 16 gigabyte edition. There's a sticker on the back there that says that. Um, I got this a couple of days ago, I haven't done anything to it at all, so it's pretty much new out of the box apart from a couple of games I've added to it. Um, the box is actually pretty good for one of these uh, kind of relatively cheaply made devices. They've kind of gone with this thick, sturdy cardboard. Bit of English on the back there. When you smile, the world loves him. When you laugh, the world fears him. God knows what that's about. GPD stands for Gamepad Digital, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, so what came in the box was a screen protector that I haven't stuck on yet. I probably won't bother. Um, and a UK adapter. So I didn't tell Will Goo that I was uh, from the UK. I didn't state that but obviously from my address they've decided what kind of adapter to send me. That's for the charger obviously. Oh, I should say I got it from Will Goo, the website. I'll put a link to that. It took, um, took just under a month to get here. Maybe about 25 days. So not too far off the 25 days stated. So um, also in the box was uh, this just a standard USB 5 volt output type thing I think you could probably use any similar kind of device. It's nice that they include it um, and it's nice they include the adapter. Now the problem was with this, this bit doesn't actually work. Um, there's a metal contact missing from that hole there which means it's completely useless. I'm sure this thing only probably cost about 50p to buy, so it's not the end of the world. This thing, again, just a couple of quid on, on Amazon or something for something equivalent. Standard um, power adapter to put output 5 volts over USB. So it's, you can see it's got the uh, old style USB thing on there, so you just need a wire with the uh, type of USB plug which goes into the device. Now the device has some ports on the back. I've got a 64 gig memory card in there. That little slot next to the thing that's plugged in is the HDMI. Sorry, it's not the HDMI. It's the USB. So it uses one of those. Uh, I think it's USB-C. I'm not sure about that, but it's uh, pretty standard USB. And at the moment, I've got an HDMI out cable plugged in the back which I will be demoing. So as they say or as I've read if you're using HDMI out on this thing you should turn it off and turn it on with the USB in. So that's what I'm doing here. So this is the GPD XD booting up. It's the uh, GPD's own software based on uh, Android 4.4.4 as you're probably aware of if you know about these things. I know you can, uh, it's all manner of different things you can do with these putting your own version of Android on and all that kind of malarkey not really the kind of thing I'm that bothered about and this is a specific reason I have to so I might go down that route later on I just want to play games on it at the moment. This is what you get when you turn it on sliding finger unlock type thing and I don't know how well this is coming out you won't be able to read all this writing but it should be good enough um, so you get the intro menu here you've got emulators, games applications up there settings down here you've got a few built-in emulators that's not all the things that you can emulate, and that's just a, I don't know why they chose these ones. Uh, Arcade, which is main based or Final Burn Alpha based, I'd imagine. N64, which I think is Moopin 64 based. Super Famicom, Dreamcast, PS1. Also comes with a whole load of other stuff. Um, I don't really use these, but they actually have some games included. So, say if you go to Arcade. These games were on the device when I got it. You got Metal Slug, Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, King of Fighters, lots of fighting games. They seem to like those in China. Knights of Valor, War Warriors of Fate. 
which is actually, I believe, a sequel to um, where's it gone? Warriors of Fate, a uh, sequel to Knights of the Round, a Capcom beat 'em up, slash 'em up type thing. There's a few uh, N64 games here: Star Fox, Paper Mario, Pokemon Ridge Racer, Famicom, Super Mario World, Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy III, Buster Move, Super Mario Kart, blah blah blah. I've hardly used these. What I'm more interested in is games that I've put on myself. Um, so I haven't done a hell of a lot with this yet. I haven't had it very long. But if I go back to here. Now Happy Chick and KO Gamebox are the main emulators I've been using so far. This is Happy Chick. This comes on it. This updated the first time I ran it. But the update worked perfectly well. It does do this funny thing, Happy Chick, where it goes into... Um, portrait orientation when you first turn it on sometimes don't know why but um, let's get it back to normal now these are the games I've got on here come on right there you go so I don't know if that's a bit of a dodgy tilt detector in my unit, or if it's a thing with Happy Chick. It only seems to mainly happen with Happy Chick, I've got to say. It's been okay with all the other programs I've used. These are the games I've downloaded so far in Happy Chick. Um, you get the option to search for ROMs, and then download them and play them. And if it Happy Chick hasn't already got the core emulator for that ROM, it will download that first as well, which is really cool. So what I wanted to uh, show on here was a bit of HDMI out and uh, not much better game to choose than Metal Slug I would say, Metal Slug 5 in this instance awesome heavy metal soundtrack so this is Metal Slug 5 on Happy Chick it's loading Neo Geo startup screen, so obviously it's a Neo Geo based game, Metal Slug 5. I believe Metal Slug 6, the last one, was the first Metal Slug game that wasn't based on Neo Geo hardware. Based on the Sega Naomi arcade board I think, which in turn is based on the Dreamcast, as far as I can remember. But it, it runs fine. Anyone that's uh, worried about the speed of this GPD with games, it works very well with some games and not so well with other games. Now I think it's more a case of the emulator and the software you're using to play it than the actual uh, power required to do the emulation. For instance, this Metal Gear 5 game, I was playing this, finished it last night, nary a hint of slowdown, not at any point, maybe just slightly, but um, it was perfectly playable. So it's obviously using good emulator, well programmed, yada yada. Now, the other reason I was going to do this film was for people wondering about HDMI out. Um, I heard that um, it can slow down the games. Well, this is the first time I've tested HDMI out, and it's not slowing it down at all. It's working fine. I'll give you a bit of a demo with my hastily set up tripod here. <laughs> um, let's see if we can get this pointing at the screen. As you can see, that's my HDMI cable. Now the first thing I'll say is my TV is cutting off about an inch or so from around the edge. It doesn't really matter, I'm not missing too much. I think it's more of a case of something that my TV does rather than um, a case of the G problem with the GPD. I can live with that. Might be able to sort that out later, but for this demo it's fine. So let's get a bit of focus here. So yeah. Put a few credits in. Start the game. Sorry about the camera angle here. I'm not really set up to do filming here, but it gives you a good idea. Now the picture is really good. The definition and everything absolutely perfect as you can see 
colours great, brightness, everything, no artefacts, no funny lines, nothing at all going wrong there. Let's give it a bit of a demo. So this is Metal Slug 5, running sweet as, using HDMI on the TV, great game. And there you have it. Now, the quality of the screen on this thing is fantastic, I would say. Let's get it, let it focus, shall we? There you go, it's focused now. Um, it's definitely one of the best screens I've ever had on a handheld gaming device, and considering how cheap this thing really is in reality, it's amazing. I'd say it's, it's e easily the equal of a very high quality smartphone screen, which is I guess what it is. I couldn't tell you what phone it is, but I'm sure if you looked into it, this is probably just a screen nicked off a current model or an old version of a smartphone. But it's fine. I'm just going to turn the brightness down a bit there, I think. It's not coming out too well. This is how you turn down the brightness. There you go. That's better. See, this, my camera is so good and this screen is so good. The brightness is just too good, <laughs> which is a good sign, I'm sure. Go back to the game. I won't be able to play this game while I'm filming, but so there you go. Let's see what I can do with one hand. Chuck a couple of bombs, fire up. There you go. Metal slug on the GPD. Very, very nice indeed. Right, I'm going to quit out of this. Quit. So, that is using Happy Chick. The other emulator which came with the device, maybe there's others you can get, I haven't really looked into that yet, but the one that came preloaded was KO Gamebox. Works in very much the same way, all Chinese, as is Happy Chick. But uh, you can work your way around it most of the time. Most of it's in English. It's really only the Chinese-only games, which have a little Chinese text, but I'm not going to be playing in many of those. These are the games I've downloaded. Now, again, this KO box thing can download games to order. You search for a game, and um, if it finds it, it will then give you the option to install it. And once you've installed it, it's there to play. Old favourite of mine, R Type. First, probably the first game I got on this as soon as I unopened it. Classic old shoot 'em up. Now I'm guessing this is using main based architecture, this particular um, emulator, KO Box. Sorry about the camera. And we've got our type running absolutely perfectly. Again, I can't really play with one hand. You get the idea. Oh! <laughs> Amazing what you can do without using a joystick. <laughs> Maybe I've just placed. Oh, there you go. He's dead. Right. Quit out of there. That's about it really. If anyone's got any more questions about this thing, post them on my uh, YouTube video. Um, build quality, very good. D-pad feels nice, buttons feel nice. Of course I've only had it for a couple of days so I can't comment on how they're going to hold out over time. Um, directional analog sticks, I haven't used those yet and I don't plan on using those much because 
I'm kind of into the old school digital cross pad type games. Um, screen is brilliant as I've said, flawless, screen couldn't be better. A couple of different lock positions, that one and that one. But you can stick it, it does hold very well any position you want including all the way flat. Um, you've got L and R buttons on the corners as said, as said in other video reviews. I haven't used these much myself but they feel very good. Nice clicky response there. Uh, the unit feels very good, nice and weighty. Uh, partly due to the battery, I'm sure it's got a very good battery in there. I haven't had any problems with the battery running out yet. It's not going to be an issue because I'm not going to use it on for long times on battery but from what I can see the stated 8 hour battery life or maybe even longer is perfectly believable I've seen read in other places so um, for just over a hundred quid this thing is fantastic if you're into emulators um, then you can't really go wrong and you don't really even have to spend another penny on it after that because if you know where to get the software you'll be happy for life getting the software for next to no cost um, that's about it really I'll wrap up there I'm not a professional filmer or reviewer as you can see I don't know if I'm going to do any more of these but if you've got specific questions about this post them on the video um, and I'll answer them if I get around to it or if I can answer them thank you very much bye